Hey there, virtual pilots. I got myself a 7950X3D, and this video is a montage of my new flight simulator PC build and my first impressions and a preview of the results that I'm getting in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you want to skip the montage, there are timestamps down in the description. I hope you enjoy the video. So what can I say about the 7950X 3D? Well, when it works, the thing is great. I'm getting very, very good performance with this processor coupled with the 4090 NVIDIA RTX card that I've got well into the 80 frames per second, fairly consistently in the 80 frames per second and the odd glimmer of the magic 90 frames per second. That's in the reverb g2 no slouch of a headset this is a very very high resolution headset making use of the open xr toolkit with fixed foveated rendering but these are very good results getting something something between 10 maybe 12 frames per second improvement over the 5800x 3d which is no slouch um so as they say, when the thing works, its performance is fantastic. I've still got a whole heap of tuning to do on my flight simulator. I had to do a, a fresh install completely from scratch because of the way uh, in which Windows schedules work to the, uh, to the cores that have the extra 3D cache with this particular chip. It's only half those cores, so uh, it has to be a fresh install of Windows. There are... I'm afraid to say some pretty significant teething problems with this processor. It has very odd moments where you, you boot up into the system and whether it's just in your VR headset sort of base environment or within Microsoft Flight Simulator or DCS, it just get very, very, very low frames per second, like five, six, seven frames per second. There's nothing that I can do within that particular session to sort it out. If I do a reboot of the system, sometimes it sorts it out, sometimes it doesn't. Fairly convinced it's got something to do with the the scheduling of the workloads uh, to those cores with the extra V cache, or potentially the um, the GPU that is inbuilt within the CPU, perhaps is picking up the word workloads. It's very odd behavior. I did follow the instructions to get the uh, the processor set up to the letter. Um, so that's very frustrating. I also bought myself an Asus uh, motherboard and for any of you who have not spotted this in the press There have been some pretty significant issues with these chips burning themselves out the chips Sort of bulging and blistering and damaging both themselves and the board and it it's not exclusive to Asus But it certainly seems more pronounced with the Asus board. It's to do with the uh, the sock voltage which is to do with uh, overclocking uh, your RAM, making use of the Expo uh, profile. So I've had BIOS update after BIOS update after BIOS update dropping out onto the uh, out for the system. So I've been installing those, some of which have been wrapped up in a whole heap of controversy about whether they invalidate uh, your warranty or not, leading to YouTubers such as 
a Jace Two Cents to completely boycott uh, the use of them in the future. So it's it, it's early days, certainly for me with this platform. There's an awful lot more tuning and setting up of the system uh, to do yet. It looks promising from the results that I'm seeing, uh, but not for the first time in my PC building uh, life. Early adoption of a new platform like this is always riddled with its challenges. So we will persevere. Uh, you will see a much more detailed review of this processor with Microsoft Flight Simulator in a very short period of time. But as always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are. Stay safe in the skies, and I will see you in my next one.